What's going on guys, Ragnarok here, coming at you with another video, and this is my, a tournament report from the locals that I went to this weekend. Um, if you're wondering why there was none last weekend, I will be explaining that at the end of the video. But for now, let's focus on what I was playing yesterday, which is a deck that I haven't actually featured yet on this channel, and that is Volcanion. Um, this deck is one I picked up for a new format. Um, it was playing on the Sun and Moon format, um, because it was fairly cheap to get hold of, because I already had one Volcanion from Rainbow Road, uh, the League promos were Volcan mini Volcanions, um, and like, those were the only expensive things, so it was like an extra 30 quid to build the rest of the deck, and if I didn't have it, it would have been like maybe 50 quid to build a deck so we'll get into the deck and then i'll talk about what happened yesterday yesterday uh no two days ago because i was waiting on some cards to arrive before i did this we start things off very simply uh four volcanion um it's simple it's what you play because steam up and volcanic heat is uh how this deck is good it knocks out big things um, then three of the Little Volcanion, the Power Heater Volcanion, because Power Heater Volcanion is good, to put it bluntly. Uh, and then just one Hooper, and one Shaman, because I don't own any more than one Shaman, and trying to change that. Um, I was stunned with how little Pokemon this plays, but it just doesn't need anything else. Um, you just learn quite quickly, it's like, okay, you want a Hooper turn one, you want to get your Volcanion set up and maybe a little one, and shaming for more, and just turbo through your deck. You want to hit your energy as soon as possible in this deck. So it's just nine Pokemon. Um, I started shaming, I think... I don't think... No, I think I started shaming once. Um, but from there, for the supporters, uh, very obviously for Sycamore, because for Sycamore... Uh, 2N, because... And it's good late uh, early game, but terrible late game. Uh, and you, because of the way that the deck works, you don't always get knockouts quite quickly. So end still works quite well. Uh, double eyes under because in this you want to make sure your prizes count. You want to make well, your knockouts count for the most value you can get out of them. Uh, one ranger because uh, st like it stops you from not. Uh, it makes you attack next turn if you ha if you use volcanic heat. Which otherwise will just not let you attack with that Volcanion. Ranger changes that. It means you can. Uh, one Fisherman. Uh, one of the cards I had to wait to arrive on. Really good card. Some people don't like it. I wasn't a fan of it when I was playing until the last game that I played. And I won because I had this in my deck. Uh, one Skylar. Skylar was kind of a last minute decision. Uh, well, there was one more card that was a last minute decision as well. This guy I was thinking about the night before, it's like, there's a lot of weird cards that sometimes you just want to get a hold of, and Skylar's just really good at that. Um, and plus, like, one of the main, there's two main reasons, one we'll get to later, but the other one is, if you don't have a supporter and you just have Skylar, you can Skylar for Ultra Ball turn one and get Hooper, and uh, that's essentially as, as good as a supporter, to be honest. Uh, and the last one was one Lily, because I wanted to try Lily. Um... And it wasn't really that great in this because you you want to turbo through. I lilied once for six and another time for four went, going uh, on my first turn. So I went from four to eight. And even then it still wasn't that good. Um, it was an extra support so I didn't really need to play. Uh, I wasn't playing Kikui because I was playing Lily instead. Um, and I don't know, maybe Kikui was better because sometimes, sometimes that extra 20 damage might help. But yeah, it's actually a lot of supporters in my eyes, just because I'm used to playing, like, 8 in Rainbow Road. This is like, it's like 8 with these, and then you've got 4, like, toolbox supporters. This isn't really a toolbox, but these three kind of are toolbox supporters. So it's 12 supporters, which is a lot more than I'm used to. Um, and then as for the items stuff, uh, obviously, for Versus Seeker, because... Versus Seeker, 
it's really really important in this deck because you have a lot of toolbox supporters that you want to use you want to use ranger you want to use fisherman you want to use lysander um it gets you out of cruddy situations uh for ultra ball because hooper because shaman i think is getting your guys into play uh, there's no reason playing your other balls because you play nine pokemon and one of those Pokemon searches three more, so there's no real reason to play any more Ultra Balls. I think at least once a match I discarded an Ultra Ball for an Ultra Ball. Just because you don't need to, but you want to see it. Uh, free Trainer's Mail for consistency. There's a lot of items you want to hit, such as this, or Trainer's sorry. Energy Retrieval, amazing card in the stack. Only reason why I'm not playing four is because the Fisherman... Um, I value these in this deck as much as versus Seekers because this gets you 60 damage and going from 130 to 190 is huge because that's EXs. Uh, uh, free Max Elixir, one because I only own three and I two I wouldn't really want to play many more anyway because you don't always want energies on Volcanians, you want energies in your hand to discard for Volcanians. So I think three is a good number. Uh, two Escape Route, one of the other cards I was waiting on. Uh, better than switch because it forces other things up. Um, there was never really a time where that came up because most of the time I had a floatstone. Never really needed these, but they were there. Uh, one professor's letter. I actually love this card in this deck um, because professor letter. Um, it's just it gets you into your energy as soon as you can. Uh, one of the problems I had was I wasn't hitting my energy quick enough. So as a result, I played professor letter. And that just gets you two energy out of your deck for free. Uh, this was like one of the other good reasons why to play Skylar because you Skylar for Press Professor's Letter, and that's just two energy just in play immediately. Uh, that's Power Heater loaded up and hitting for 50, and that because you have to discard. You get the attachment for, you know, you discard it, the other energy, and you get energy going really quickly um, with this card. So it's really, really good to play. Uh, and then as for tools, free floatstone. Um, I actually should talk about this because normally I think most Volcanion decks play two floatstone. Um, me and another uh, person who is playing Volcanion, we both came to the conclusion that we think free floatstone is better. Um, just because free, like you hit your floatstone, you want to hit floatstones. You want to have floatstones very, very often. Um, you want floatstone on the Hooper if you can't get rid of it. Um, and you want floatstones on Volcanions, especially the ones that are like hitting first. Ideally, you want to go vo Volcanion retreat, Volcanion, and then maybe Ranger uh, or Escape Rogue if you don't have another floatstone. So, three floatstone we thought was a bit better. And so, I'm gonna come here. Two Fighting Fury belts. I never put one on a big Volcanion. More so, I just sat them on little Volcanions, just so it could take a little bit more bef uh, bef and do a bit more damage before. Um, they get knocked out. So, even then, I wasn't even that big of a fan. Um, sometimes it was just like, okay, I've got my what I need. I actually want this thing to die. Um, just because I don't want to stick a float stone on it. Uh, and then for stadiums, two Scorched Earth because turboing through your deck, getting energy in your discard pile, very, very handy. Prefer it over off seas because there's a lot of things. Like, sure, it's a two shot format where there's like. Or people are saying it's two shot format where just things are just doing two shots. But uh off the top of my head, the only one that comes to mind is Lorantis, and you one shot Lorantis. You you should almost always beat Lorantis anyway. Um other than that, like it's sometimes relevant, not, not really. I'd rather just two it from my deck. And then one parallel city. Um it was Parallel City or Skyfield both to do the same thing which is kill off your own hooper and shaman um which i think parallel city just does better because it's more reliable um i think i paralleled myself at least once a match uh and by parallel myself i mean do that um so i think actually i don't know if it was actually at the tournament but i feel like at one game that I, no i wasn't at that uh i was online where my opponent uh, had me on the parallel uh, doing less damage, and then he played Silent Lab, and then I parallels um, him, so I, I had no I had no bench, and uh, I could actually do things again.
do enough damage to knock stuff out. But yeah, Perilous A is an annoying card, I hate it to death. But it's really good in this deck just so you can not let stuff die. Good against Mayor A and good against any water because you stop them doing damage, mainly running your Aqua Tool box. Other than that, that's everything other than the 5, 9, 11 Fire Energy I played. Um, just played the 11. Uh, I was playing 12, but I cut that down. Uh, I also cut Super Rod before the event uh, for Lily, funnily enough. Uh, and I missed it in that game where I fishermaned. But we'll talk about that game when we get to it. So, to talk about what I played against, uh, round one I played against a good friend, uh, the one who wanted to get me into the game. Um, and she was playing um, Umbreon Yam Mega. Uh, game one, we both break pretty hard, we both have to do painful sycamores, except she sycamores a lot, like two Yam Megas and a Vaporeon and a couple other things, where I have to uh, sycamore away another sycamore and two versus Seeker. Her resources are recoverable, mine aren't, uh, and I still can't get going quick enough to actually be, uh, to actually take her down. Um, she just be is able to turbo through her deck where I'm not. Um, and then game two, we go into time because I was thinking a lot because I didn't know what I was doing. It was the first time I played Volcanic at a tournament. Um, and as such, we went in time and it was like, yeah, I can't win. I'm just going to give it to you. It is your game. Um, I'm not going to play it out because there's no reason to. There's nothing I could do. Um, so then I, so I lost that. And then round two, um, I played against... I played against some kid who was playing Excadrill. Um, the one from, I believe it's... I believe it's Ancient Origins. The one that can attack twice. Um, and all I'm just going to say is it has... It, it, it just dies. He couldn't get anything set up. He was playing like Volcanions with uh, the uh, the evolutions, which I mean isn't a bad like casual deck, but uh, Volcanion is all I'm gonna say. And then round three, I played against an Aqua Toolbox like deck, uh, but instead of using Lapras, it was using uh, Primal Kyogre, um, so that it could you know one shot these things, which uh, was interesting. Um, game one, he could never get anything set up in time. He had no energy acceleration. Um, and I just kept beating down his EXs. And then game two came very, very close. It was very, very back and forth. Taking each other's, like, things out. Um, I came down to very, very few cards in my deck. I had four prizes, and he had three. Um, no, we both had four, and he took it out of Volcanion, so we had two. So... Uh, I think I Versus Seeker for a Fisherman, got a bit of energy, knocked something out. He didn't have the energy to do anything with because he had a, he just used Primal Kyogre's attack. Um, so he was loading up a Primal Kyogre in the back, ready to knock me out. Um, her Versus Seeker for a Lysander. Um, by the way, before this I Max Elixir and look at the last five cards in my deck. And attach an energy to one of my Volcanions. Um... Stole for a bit of time. I, f I can't. I think I bring up a. What was it? I think it was just a Kyogre with no energy on it. And I was like, okay, you, you have to attach an energy or you can't get out. Uh, and that's what I was relying on because I didn't see switches and I didn't see escape ropes. Um, because Manaphy, you know, why would you? Um, so I. So that forced him to stall for a turn. He kept going into his Whale Lord. Um, uh, and because I waited out the time that I needed to, uh, well, I took out Manaphy as well, so that meant he couldn't retreat uh, without getting another Manaphy in play, uh, and then still getting his stuff out of there. So I was at two prizes. Um, I had to wait a turn, so I had to, you know, um, couldn't do anything for a turn. Uh, he didn't have an energy, and then I was like, okay, all I need. It's a couple of energy, which I've still got in my hand. I draw for turn, and he's like, and he's like, oh my god, if you have a versus secret. It's like, well, I don't have one in hand. 
Well, I know what that, what that last card of my deck is. So, I train his mail, and I just show him the last card of my deck is a Versa Seeker for Lysander, 2 energy, and for the Primal Kyogre that had 70 damage on it beforehand, I take it out, and oh my god, I was shaking, <laughs> just because it was like, this is way too close, and mainly because if we went to game 3, uh, it would have gone in time, because it, that game 2 took a while. Um, uh, but after that, uh, the event was over because it was there was only ten people t that turned up, which was the smallest I've actually been to. Um, I ended up coming fifth. I was like the lowest two one because I lost in round one, um, and I got bugger all. Uh, I traded for some stuff though. Uh, I got a couple Umbreon GXs just as a bit of trade bait. Uh, I got rid of my secret rare psychic energy that I pulled uh, last week, so, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be playing this again for a little bit, I'm going to be testing for Sheffield Regionals, or whatever it is, because um, that's coming up in about a month, uh, and I think I'm going to be playing Rainbow Road for that, but otherwise, if you don't want to hear what happened last week, feel free to turn off now, and I hope you have enjoyed. Otherwise, um, for anyone wants to know what happened last week, so I'll talk a little bit about the matches, but um, we'll uh, talk about something else that happened which really bothered me and it triggered me a little bit. So, round one, it was like a Sun and Moon legal, so I was using uh, Rainbow Road and I had like three Nest Ball and three Ultra Ball because I only had one Shaman. It was a really weird list and I just wanted to try Nest Ball uh, and Kukui. Uh, I learned that Nest Ball was good, but I prefer, I think I would have still played, I still, I'm going to play four Ultra Ball, two Nest Ball. Anyway, so round one, I go against uh, Laurentis Fireplume. Uh, game one, she only has Oddishes until, like, she's in threat of losing the second Oddish, and then it's like, oh, okay. And then, like, I'm just set up and killing things, and she can't do anything about it. Excuse me. Um, then game... Two, uh, I break, and game three, I end, and then break for the entire game. Uh, I see no Pokemon in those two games that aren't Xerneas. Uh, the item lock, she item locks me like pretty quick on both games, but like I just didn't hit a supporter, and there was nothing in my hand that was useful anyway. Like I didn't draw an Ultra Ball to get me anywhere. It was like Max Elixirs and like Versus Seekers. Which yeah, the Versus Seeker for an end would have been nice, but like. Maybe a Versus Seeker? Uh, like Nest Balls and other things, it was like, I can't really do anything with any of this anyway. Uh, so I just breaked and I was kind of unhappy about that because I thought I had a good matchup against Laurentis Valplume. Uh, but then between round 1 and 2 I was watching uh, one of my friends play uh, and um, they went into time and, all, and uh, the guy who he was playing against was like, oh yeah, time uh, is based on prizes, isn't it? And we're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, no, if, if you... If you uh, lose, if like no one wins in time, then it's a draw for that game. And they, it is with game three, so it mattered. Uh, he was playing Volcanion and uh, uh, my friend anyway, and then the opponent was playing uh, Evil Togarb. So the the person who helped organize the tournament said, "Yeah, yeah, it's based on prizes." We we're like, so "Since when?" It's like, "Yeah, we're doing it, so it just stops draws." It's like, "Okay, fine." So we trusted them on that. Um, uh, it didn't end up mattering for their game, uh, my friend won, because he had a Lysander for a Shaman. Um, but then round two, uh, I played against the guy who I normally play against who plays Greninja. Uh, game one went on for quite some time, because uh, he was running hammers and team flat grunts. Um, <coughs> but I won because he just couldn't do anything. <laughs> Uh, then game two goes pretty quick because I brick, and then game three, it's like, oh, it's ten minutes left, we'll just call it a draw on time, and I'm like, wait, no, cause, uh, well, we shake on it first because I, I was like, okay, yeah, and then afterwards, I'm like, wait, no, because uh, they changed time proceedings, um, we should play it out, um, it's like, they have, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's based on prizes, so it actually matters, so then we agree to play it out, that one of the people who comes, uh, comes in afterwards, um, uh, like when we're just about to sit down and start playing, he says, "Wait, so you guys drew?" It's like, "No, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna play, we're gonna play." Uh, so we play. 
Uh, he, I win because he breaks, to put it bluntly. He hits a Talon Flame, doesn't hit an energy all game, uh, or a basic, which really sucks for him. Uh, but I won, and I was like, cool, I'm 1 1 now. Um, uh, go to game 3, and I play against some kid. He was playing a, an Aqua Toolbox with like 3 stage 2s, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is just not gonna go well for him. I actually attacked with Mew for like the first time then, because I got Mew set up before I got a Xerneas, and I was like, cool, now I have a Xerneas, now I'll just start attacking with Mew. Um, swiftly 2-0 with that, and I go up uh, and report my standings, and then one of the people said there, it's like, oh, I, sorry, I had to put you down as a draw for round 2, um, because of the uh, time, because of time, um, the rulings were wrong, what I got told. And what they were apparently changed to, they were changed back to the to the correct rulings, which is draws. Um, and as a result, I got put down as a draw. Um, so essentially, after round two, I was uh, zero one one, and I was just like, really. So so the tournament organizers basically made me draw instead of win. It's like great. So I was very unhappy. Um, it's the only unhappy experience I've had with Pokemon at the moment, but I was like, really, this is just dumb. So, and then round four, I played against some kid, and it, it was it was quick. So, it just really bothered me that, um, and that's why I didn't want to report it. Um, but uh, I will try and report as many as I can. It wasn't because I, it, it was partially because I didn't do well, and there was no point recording it, plus there was no matches that I, after, after round two, there was no matches that mattered. At all, because it was just two kids. Because I was uh, one one one, or I was one, zero one one for round three, and one 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 for round four. So I just played against kids and just bodied them because it was Rainbow Road and just got set up quick. Um, but yeah, I was just not very happy with it. Uh, but I'm gonna test in Rainbow Road a lot more because I'm gonna be playing it for Sheffield. Other than that, thank you guys for sticking around. And uh, I shall hopefully see you guys next week with Rainbow Road. Um, we'll see how that goes. See you guys next time.